when we talk about lifestyle modification, I'd like to focus on basically four things. One is diet. Recent studies have shown that probably the best heart-healthy diet is one that's high in fruits and vegetables, whole grain, high-quality vegetable or animal protein, and fish, and one that minimizes the consumption of red meat, high sugar content food and beverages, simple refined carbohydrates. So that's number one. Number two is exercise. Certainly exercise has been proven to lower your LDL cholesterol, but also to raise your good cholesterol, your HDL cholesterol. And the general recommendations are try to achieve 150 minutes a week of moderate intensity of exercise or 75 minutes a week of heavy intensity exercise. I have a lot of patients who do a lot of activity just with their workplace. Use the stairs instead of the elevator. Park a little bit further away in the parking right. lot. It all adds up by the end of the day. Number three, and very important, stop smoking. If you smoke, you definitely need to quit. You can lower your risk of heart disease by about 50% within a year if you stop smoking compared to someone that still smokes. And finally, if you're overweight, lose weight. Very important. Not only does it lower your cholesterol, but it also lowers your risk for diabetes, helps with your blood pressure, and a lot of other things. And again, it's a matter of getting into some lifestyle program where you're trying to lose three to five pounds a month through diet and exercise. Unfortunately, for most people, particularly those patients that are high risk, lifestyle changes, even though very important, aren't sufficient. They don't get your numbers down to where we'd like them to be. So then we have to move towards medications. And there are several classes of medications that lower your cholesterol, particularly your LDL cholesterol. Statins, very commonly used. Medicines called bile acid sequesterants cholesterol absorption inhibitors. Niacin is an old medication that can lower your cholesterol. And more recently, a class of medicine called PCSK9 inhibitors, which also help to lower your cholesterol and are actually very effective. But for most people, we generally start with statins. And we do that because there's been enormous data over the past 30 to 40 years that have shown their efficacy, not only in lowering your cholesterol by 30 to 50%, but also lowering your risk for heart disease, and particularly heart attack or cardiac death. Also, there's other effects of the statins, anti-inflammatory effects. And so anybody who's had an event, a bypass, heart attack, stroke, should be on a statin, a high-intensity statin, not just the high intensity just refers to the dose uh, uh, and a certain kinds of statins that are a little more powerful than the others. Some patients have side effects that they just feel they can't tolerate. Right. And then we do move on to drugs like PCSK9 inhibitors, which are relatively recent, haven't been out that long, but have been shown to be very powerful LDL cholesterol-lowering drugs. And at least based upon the short-term information and data that we've collected, they seem to be very safe, well-tolerated, and very effective. I think that's a great overview of yeah. lipids, what they do, why they're important in the development of cardiovascular disease, and how we can go about monitor, or modifying them to lower our risk for heart disease in the future. I'd just like to mention four take-home points that I think are important. Number one, the most important way to prevent cardiovascular disease and its sequela is to promote a healthy lifestyle that should begin early in life and continue throughout life. And that's very important as a basis. Number two, Evaluation should include an atherosclerotic risk assessment and then a discussion between the clinician and the patient about whether to proceed with further testing and medical therapy in addition to lifestyle modifications. Number three, when needed, statin therapy is considered the first line therapy, medical therapy for both primary and secondary prevention, is very well tolerated for the most part, inexpensive, and has been proven to be very effective but as we talk, there are now newer therapies that are available that also appear to be very helpful as well. And finally, a team approach, such as provided in the Parkview Lipid Clinic, it will, is very helpful in allowing us to achieve adequate lipid goals. I think uh, those are excellent take-home points, and I think it's a good place to wrap it up. Just remember, when it comes to heart disease, we have a lot of good treatments out there, but prevention is better than treatment.